Hi, I'm Dr. Ingrid Clayton. I'm a clinical psychologist, a trauma therapist, and a trauma survivor. And one of the things that's challenging about being a childhood trauma survivor is when you become a parent, and even though you've been an aunt and a godmother and a nanny and what, what are all the other things I've been that I thought I did well at? I was like, oh, this parenting thing, like no problem. Parenting, the parent-child relationship that was wired into my body because that's how we learn, did not prepare me <laughs> to be a parent. My degrees as a therapist, didn't prepare me, ill-equipped. Okay, that's that's what it feels most of the time, is ill-equipped for this parenting gig. And then as a new parent, I was looking up all the books and wanting all the information, and often what I was finding was like specific developmental tasks that should be you know, completed by a certain time and what your child can understand. It was all about the kid, basically. And none of this really helped me because what I was struggling with, and I didn't know that this was what I was struggling with, but what I was struggling with were my own triggers related to my own trauma and how it was showing up as a parent. I'm triggered, I'm easily dysregulated, I feel like I don't have any skills or patience, uh, I'm overwhelmed, I get resentful, all of these horrible things that I never thought I'd feel as a parent. I'm feeling that, I'm looking to the experts to try to sort of figure out, okay, what do I do now? And they're all talking about my kid. I can't apply some of those things because they're not teaching me how to regulate my own nervous system, how to start with me. And I'm gonna be honest that this for me as a trauma survivor has been the hardest work. It's so hard that I don't even talk about it that often because I don't feel like I have enough traction, enough skills, enough progress to be able to share not only the struggle but some of the insight and, and helpfulness. So with all that being said, I was watching a Dr. Becky video. I love me some Dr. Becky. She is a parenting psychologist. She has books and podcasts and Instagram and all the things. She's trauma informed and she does IFS, which I love for complex trauma. And she talks about parenting. And so I was watching something that she said about our jobs as parents and what a child's job is. And it's gonna make me emotional to break it down, okay? So a parent, she's gonna say it better than me, go watch her stuff. A parent's job is to set boundaries and validate and empathize with their child's feelings. And I go, okay, okay, I can do that. I can try to do that. It makes sense to me, rather. A child's job is to feel and express the full array of feelings related to the human condition. Why? Because this is what it means to be human. Why? Because today we're aiming to equip our kids with language and expression and capacity and regulation about their feelings that we weren't given. It's sort of like, you know, speak when spoken to, or I don't, want, I don't want to hear that whining, or that's disrespectful, and everything is sort of seen through this pathological negative lens, making the kid bad and wrong for having feelings that quite frankly, it's taken me decades to own and identify and have language for and express and set healthy boundaries around. So we're trying to equip our kids with these skills, which means we have to let them have the feelings. We have to let them communicate. We have to let it, you know, uh, whatever. All of the lovely expressions that quite frankly really trigger me. I'm sort of digesting this information. It's, that's a kid's job, is to feel and express all of their feelings. And then in response to that is a parent who can set healthy boundaries, they're still sturdy, but they validate and empathize. And I go, wow, her whole model of trauma-informed parenting is based on these two key things that I did not get.
No wonder this is challenging. I love that she says we can learn this. I'm not going to learn it overnight. Like everything else related to trauma healing, it's all a practice. It's an embodied practice. I show up. I do my best. That's all I can do. I love my child madly more than anything. He's amazing. I want to do right by him. I'm never going to do it perfectly. But I'm trying to learn these skills. We're not even given that much latitude as adults let's let's be honest right and so that's where part of the resentment comes from that i can experience like i was never allowed to have big feelings and if i had them boy there was punishment i was shut down and i learned how to swallow how i really felt how to accommodate the adults in the room right i had myriad of trauma responses in order to live and survive in my upbringing. And so there's this part of me, it's not the conscious, rational, loving, you know, compassionate part. It's the kid in me who goes, I was never given those. Why can't my son just dot, 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 dot? And I know that rationally what I'm saying is why can't my son just develop the trauma responses that I developed? Of course, I don't want that consciously, but my body is screaming going, I never had that, right? I shouldn't have to tolerate it now as though it's sort of my turn to be the parent that everyone's going to walk on eggshells around. Again, not conscious. It feels so gross to say these things out loud. It's really embarrassing, but I'm trying to let some of the shame out of it because I know that it's what a lot of trauma survivors feel in relationship to parenting. So that's what I have for today. If you're a parent and a trauma survivor, I see you. I get this is hard. I know that you love your kids. I know that you love yourself. And thank goodness there's more information out there now that's not just about how to get your kid to do the thing that they're meant to do by this certain age and that if you can't do it, there's something wrong with you. That we're turning that focus back onto where we have some control. <laughs> where, where I have some control. I am the thing that I can do something about, right? I can learn how to regulate my nervous system, take some deep breaths, understand these roles, reparent myself, be kind and compassionate to me so that I can be that sturdy person that I want to be for my son. I cannot, and really I do not want to, put him in some box where I have to make him into something that he is not so that he can cooperate in whatever way I think that he's meant to, which is going to stifle him in his growth. It's not to say that we don't have rules and boundaries and we communicate things in a respectful way, but it's that he's learning what all of that means. And he gets to learn how many of us as kids never got to learn. You had to know. And if you miss the mark, you're in trouble right? There was no like, hey, here's the goalpost. Here's some skills. Oh, I see you might be missing some skills. Let's talk about that. Let's see how we can kind of shore up your toolbox. <sighs> there was no such thing. So it's a radically different universe that I've had to step into as a parent in particular. And it's one of the most important things I think that I can do in addition to healing my own trauma is to see how I show up for my son so that I don't pass these things down. These things being, I matter, you don't, right? What I say goes in this very authoritarian, uh, trauma-inducing way. I wanna take my kid in as he is a whole person who's learning and growing and becoming the best version of himself. And it is my honor to get to foster that, even though it's the hardest job I will ever do. My name is Ingrid Clayton. I'm a psychologist, a trauma therapist, and a trauma survivor. Thanks for listening. Subscribe to my channel. If you identify with anything I've shared, I'd love to hear your comments. 
uh, down below, create a little community around the challenge of parenting and what has been helpful for you. Who are the people that you're listening to their podcasts, reading their books, feeling validated uh, in your journey? I'd love to hear about it. And thanks for being here till next time. Bye-bye.